In this episode of News from Poland Business and Law, we will talk about the hearing of a foreigner, especially a member of a company's management board, and how it may look if the person has to testify in a Polish civil court as a party to the proceedings. Our program is intended for foreigners acting as board members in Polish companies, foreign investors in Poland, and their foreign advisors. Let's get started. A party to a dispute in court may be the person who is suing, namely the claimant, or the one who is being sued, in other words, the defendant. This may be either a physical person, in other words, an individual, or a company whose rights and obligations will be affected by the judgment. If the party is an individual, then that person will have to testify in person before the court. However, if the party is a company, then the persons who serve on its management board will testify on its behalf because the board members are, as it were, the mind and the mouthpiece of the company. They will always testify as a party. They cannot testify as witnesses. However, if the management board has two or more members, it is up to the court to decide whether to hear all of those persons, one by one, or just some of them. In a court trial, the parties to a dispute have to prove their case by using legal arguments and various pieces of evidence, particularly documentary evidence, which has priority in commercial cases, and by using the testimony of witnesses. Evidence should constitute facts that are of significance for the resolution of the case. Evidence taken from a hearing of the parties constitutes only auxiliary evidence. This means it is only admissible for circumstances that are significant for the case and cannot be explained by other evidence and the parties filed an application for such evidence to be taken. Under the Civil Procedure Code, if all the significant circumstances of the case have been explained by documents and testimonies of witnesses or court experts, it will be unnecessary and even inadmissible for the court to take evidence from the testimony of the parties. However, in practice, courts almost always admit evidence from a hearing of the parties. In our experience, this evidence is important because it is taken at the very end of the proceedings, when the trial's outcome is being decided. This is, of course, only so if a testifying board member possesses key knowledge of facts that would be significant for resolving the case. A feature of evidence taken from a hearing is its symmetry. If the court decides to hear one party, it should also hear the other. In practice, however, there are often situations in which the representatives of only one of the parties to proceedings was involved in the particular transaction, while on the other side the management board has very little or even no knowledge of it. This happens, for example, in large corporations. In such a situation, the court restricts the hearing to only the one party that has knowledge of the matter, either the claimant or the defendant or altogether dispenses with hearing the parties. If a party refuses to give evidence, the court will not be able to penalize it for the refusal, for example by fining it, or to compel it to attend to court. The court may impose such penalties on witnesses because they have an obligation to testify. Therefore, the court does not possess any legal instruments which it may use to compel a party to give evidence. A party that refuses to give evidence simply runs the risk of losing the trial, because the court's interpretation of its own internal doubts may turn out to be unfavorable for that party. So it is in the party's interest to submit its own testimony. Any anticipated non-appearance at a trial due to, for example, illness or long-planned foreign holiday must be excused. However, an excuse involving illness requires the production of a certificate from a medical practitioner. Information about the locations, dates and appointment hours of special court-appointed medical practitioners is available from court websites. The rule is that a party, just like a witness, gives evidence orally. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, the rule was that witnesses and parties would give evidence during a hearing held in a courtroom inside a courthouse. However, a rule was introduced at the start of the pandemic for evidence to be given during remotely held hearings. Such hearings have really caught on and are now very common, saving parties the time and money they might have spent on traveling to court. 
The claimant or defendant who submits an application to hear board members as parties must provide the court with their mobile phone numbers and email addresses. A person who is summoned to give evidence receives an email from the court with a link to an internet connection and then connects to the court at the time of the hearing. If the giving of evidence is to take place in a courthouse, i.e. not remotely, on arriving at the courthouse, you will first have to go through a security check, similar to the one in airport departures. After that, you should head for the courtroom stated on the summons. There you need to check the case list. This is an electronic or paper list hung near the entrance to the courtroom. It gives the names of the persons to be heard, together with the times for which they have been summoned. If, for some reason, the hearing has been moved to another courtroom, this information will be provided on the case list. The layout of a courtroom is always the following. Under the Polish national emblem, which hangs centrally on a wall, sits the judge behind the table and near the judge sits the recording clerk. Opposite the judge's table is a lectern at which, first of all, witnesses testify standing followed by the parties to the proceedings. To the right of the judge, so to the left when seen by the person giving evidence while standing before the judge, sit the claimant and the claimant's lawyers in court robes. On the left of the judge sit the defendant and the defendant's lawyers. Management board members who are to testify for the company should sit together with their lawyers. On the left side of the room when their company is a claimant or on the right side of the room if their company is a defendant. If the hearing is taking place in a courthouse, i.e. not online, third parties may also be present in the courtroom as members of the public. These could be, for example, journalists or former employees of the company that is party to the dispute. The open nature of hearings, allowing the presence of members of the public, is a constitutional principle. With remote hearings, this principle is curtailed. This is because, in practice, the public does not obtain access to a hearing, because usually the court provides a link to the remote session only to the participants of the given court hearing, namely the parties to the dispute, their attorneys, witnesses and expert witnesses. Before a hearing begins, you must show the judge your identity card or passport. If you are a foreigner and not fluent in Polish, the court should hear you with the assistance of a sworn interpreter, who will be arranged by the court at the request of the attorneys, claimants or defendants, who have applied to have the parties heard. You are therefore not required to bring your own interpreter to the hearing. Before proceeding with the hearing, the court warns the parties that they are obliged to testify truthfully and that, as appropriate, they may be questioned again after they have given an oath. The court starts the examination by asking a few questions about age, profession and level of education. When answering questions from a judge, you should address the judge as honored court. In other words, as if addressing an institution or authority. You should never address the judge as sir or madam. The court first examines the witnesses without taking their oaths. If this examination fails to cast sufficient light on the facts, the court may question the party again, but after taking an oath from it. Before taking an oath, the court warns the party about criminal liability for giving false testimony. Therefore, if a party chooses to testify before the court, it should obviously tell the truth. At this point, we should clarify the issue of criminal liability for giving false testimony. In accordance with the Criminal Code, if in giving testimony intended to serve as evidence in court proceedings, a person testifies falsely or conceals the truth, that person will be subject to a penalty of imprisonment for six months to eight years. Nevertheless, it is a condition for liability that the person taking the testimony, here the judge at the trial, has warned the testifier of criminal liability for false testimony or taken an oath from the testifier. All the same, the court may show extraordinary leniency or even waive the penalty if the false testimony relates to circumstances that cannot affect the resolution of the case or the perpetrator voluntarily corrects the false testimony before the case is resolved. But let's return to the course of a hearing. When the judge has finished, it is time for the lawyers of the parties to ask questions. First, 
the board members answer questions from the attorneys of that party to the proceedings that applied for the person to be examined. The next questions are put by lawyers of the other party. When testifying in the courtroom or remotely online, you must speak off the top of your head. You cannot read your testimony from a prepared document. But beware, while a party is being examined, it may be confronted with documents and witnesses. During a hearing, video and audio recordings are made. A camera is positioned above the judge's heads. Irrespective of this, the judge usually dictates to the court clerk successively what the letter should enter into the written record documenting the testimony. The person who is giving the testimony may correct this dictated text as it arises if the person finds any errors. Also, at the end of the examination, the person may ask the court to read the testimonies. If the testifier notices any errors, that person may request the court for written record to be supplemented or corrected. Important note, if the examination is being held with the assistance of an interpreter, one should speak clearly into the microphone and provide short breaks every two or three sentences, so that the interpreter may faithfully convey the testimony to the court. If the hearing is taking place in the courthouse, therefore not remotely or online, the question then arises of the reimbursement of travel and possible accommodation expenses. The party's lawyers should apply to the court for an award of these costs in the final judgment. As a general rule, these costs must be paid by the party that loses the trial. And that's all we have on this subject. We hope that you find our program useful. See you again soon. Thank you.